This is a, an incident from the 21st of October 1991. A taxi driver called Alex Bunting was picking up a fur on Sandy Row. The IRA had left a booby trap bomb under his car. Alex's wife Linda and the family wanted to see how this was covered on the news. It was the 21st of October 1991 that uh, the incident happened. I was 37 years of age. I picked up a, a lady on the Ballyselling Road and we drove down into the town. When I got as far as the, the brow of the Boyne Bridge, there was this like almighty flash coming out of the dash. And it was like a rainbow of colours. A split second later, the bang. And the next thing, my leg shot off. I was blew out the door. There's a body lying in the street behind me here. A young chap seemed to have definitely lost a leg. The injured driver is a Protestant in his 40s from the Westland area of North Belfast and is married with two children. It's believed his car was left... Alec was out working from 6 o'clock in the morning to 6 at night, taxiing. And we were saving well and we were planning to, you know, we deposit for a house. They were the good days. And we went on holiday, our first holiday together, and we were only back from holiday three weeks when Alec was blew up. Just that, that day just completely changed our whole lives. As I was travelling to school that morning, I seen the, the car. I was only ten at the time. I couldn't remember the bus being rerouted, and at the bottom of the, where that bar is there, there on the Sandy Row. Hope Street. Hope Street and uh, my daddy's car was just sitting in pieces, complete pieces. The next day after the explosion happened, I went in with my mum and he was sort of semi-conscious. I asked my mum, was it, you know, he was quite aware, one or two, you know, his legs. He knew he'd lost and he, he didn't know. And I suppose that, that's... I was looking forward to him coming home and then when he got home it was just, whoa. I wasn't a very nice person to live with. I was very grumpy, I was very argumental. Uh, nothing was good enough, you know, and all this, you know, and, uh, you know, it was just... At the time, I, I just was angry, an angry man. I feel I made him a dinner. And he got to a stage he, he didn't want the dinner and he was swiping it off the table. And I sort of got to the stage, I said, we're not going to be together if this is going to go on. He would get fixated on things. He, you know, he's, if his TV broke, right? Um, or he phoned me one night and he says to me, you better get down here, my sky's not working, right? Now, I lived 14 miles away. So I got in my car because he was, I knew he was torturing my mum that much about the sky. And I had to drive down to the banger from Belfast. And I got down and the batteries in the remote control needed changed. But he tortured her that much that she, I mean, it was unbelievable. And she was ready to walk out the door. You lift the bag and you walk out the door and walk around the corner. And I got on the train. Do you remember the day we got on the train, me and Carl? We got to the train station. I got on the train to go to Belfast. And I'd never been on a train. <laughs> and I don't know how long. And I don't even know where I got off. I, was, I think it was Botanic Gardens or something. <laughs> and me and him just stood in the train station crying. Here's me. I don't even know where we are, Carl. <laughs> couldn't think. <laughs> the thing that got me most is I couldn't provide for my family. And I couldn't be the person that I was. You know what I mean? And I thought that life was over for me, basically. I heard this noise in the kitchen. And I run down the stairs to see, I thought Alec had fallen. And when I walked into the kitchen, he had taken an overdose. And I phoned the ambulance for him, for to come. And I was so angry that for what he had come through, I just was mad at him and I was shouting at him. After all them doctors have done for you, um, you're going to take the easy way out.
as much as he had his struggles, we had ours. You know, the man that went out at door at five to eight in the morning never came back. And we had to get used to this other man that did come back. But we also had to deal with the physical and the psychological impact of what happened. And I think then, you know, I had a, a mum who was clinging on with her fingernails to try and keep everything together. I was actually having nightmares and seeing my daddy's leg being blown over his head and just it was a horrible, horrible feeling. Cone just didn't cope. He took epilepsy and about the bad depression he took was terrible. And we went through a stage like I thought I was going insane because he was texting me, where are you? How long will you be? People don't realise that you have to go on the rest of your life like this. My aim from day one, I would not let that destroy my family. Sometimes you feel like walking away, but you know, you, you'll not be going. <laughs> you know what I mean? The love was too great there for anything like that to happen, you know.